What's up, everybody? My name is Zachary Still Edwards, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you. I appreciate everyone who watches my videos. In this video, I'll be telling you how to get into the Polytechnical di Milano. I'm currently a student in the Integrated Product Design program, the master's program specifically. And so this video will be mainly pertaining to design students thinking about applying to the school because each program is gonna be a little bit different. I continually get uh, DMs or DMs from Instagram, Facebook, or even TikTok asking me about the different tips and tricks that I was able to use to be able to get into the school. So in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on what I did to make my application stand out and the different things that I was able to use to be able to eventually be accepted into the school. Now in this video, I will not be talking about the enrollment process. So I'm not gonna be talking about CHMIA verifications or visa verifications or the permesso di soggiorno, uh, I was gonna say perché, but because that needs to be its own separate video because that's a whole process within itself. In this video specifically, I'm gonna be focusing on the transcript, the letter of recommendation, the letter of motivation. Before I get into the video, the number one question that I get all the time is do I need to have a design background or specifically an industrial design degree to be able to get into this program and the answer is no now if you saw before in my video I don't know which side it pops up on but in the video that I talk about my portfolio I explained that in my background is a art background I started as an industrial design major but then I switched eventually to art because I wanted to focus on my sketching skills and work with different materials. Now I am back in industrial design because I just love industrial design and building things that I was able to transfer those skills over to be able to do design. Now that's not to say that if you have your degree in pre-med or chemistry or mathematics that you're unable to apply for this degree. However, you need to make up for that in your portfolio that shows that you have the ability and understand the concepts of basic design from sketching all the way to final prototypes. This is the probably one of the most DM questions that I get is what was your GPA in undergrad? Like how high of a GPA should I get? Should I even apply because my GPA is kind of low? So during undergrad, was I the best student? Not necessarily. Now, I was the type of student that I enjoyed the classes that I did and I didn't enjoy the classes that I didn't. And what that translated to is I would get A's in all the classes that I enjoyed and all the classes I didn't really care about, I really didn't care. My philosophy, which you can take it with a grain of salt, is you can't do everything. I literally had a W on my transcript because I withdrew from a geology class that I didn't realize that they were posting the homework on another section. So I was like behind like three weeks. So I was like, forget this. I'm not doing this class. And um, I also took a whole semester off to move to California because I was dealing with things and I wanted to get some more real world experience. And so my transcript isn't perfect. And to be honest, what I believe is the professors, when they're viewing your uh, whole entire application, your transcript is just to show that you were able to finish the school or you finished your undergrad. You did it relatively well. When I was an undergraduate student, I was working two jobs. So it was a lot of different things that I was dealing with at the time. So sometimes you really just, sometimes you really just don't have time to do all the things that you wanna do or study as much as you can. Um, so during my undergrad, I graduated with a 3.6. Now, is it the most spectacular GPA? No. Uh, did I get magnum cum laude? Yes. Did I get into the Polytechnical di Milano? Si. Again, I didn't graduate with my undergraduate degree in industrial design. I graduated with a bachelor's of arts in art. However, I started off as an industrial design student, so I took a lot of basic studio classes and I took a lot of design courses and design classes that I was able to get A's in. So it did show that I did have some type of a basis of a design background before I applied. However, like I said, you don't necessarily need to have a degree in design to be able to apply for the master's degree program in whatever design program you're choosing. However, it does help. Now, let's say that you have a degree that's completely outside of design. 
and your transcript doesn't have anything on it that's necessarily design oriented. You can obviously take um, a uh, certificate class. You can get a certificate from a university. You can get certificates from, I know Google does certificates. I'm not sure if they do specifically design ones, but you can do all different types of certificates online that I would highly recommend, or even a community college class if you feel like you want to buffer your transcript a little bit more. However, for me, I was just like, let's do this. Now, I will say this, your transcript is very important to the Polytechnical di Milano after you get accepted. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of things that you try to apply for are based off of your undergrad GPA. So for example, scholarships are based off of your undergrad GPA. Sometimes even choosing your classes for like your uh, study plan is based off of your GPA. They give preference to people who have higher GPAs. Uh, scholarships are based off of GPA. So it does come in, it is very important to the Polytechnical de Milano besides just getting admitted into the school. Now, um, even, even jobs, even the jobs, if you want a student or a campus student job, uh, preference is given to students who have higher GPAs. So it is important, but it's not necessarily the most important thing that you need to be worrying about. In my opinion, compared to the United States, the GPA is way more important than I'm normally used to. So that's why I wasn't going crazy, I guess, in my undergrad to try to get the best score, graduate top of my class. Because let's be honest, you can't buy groceries with good grades. Me specifically, when I was coming from the United States, I had to submit like a course catalog that showed all the different courses and a description of what they were. Make sure that you do that. When I applied, um, I got an email from the school saying that they were missing that in my application. So I just wanna save you a little bit of time by if you don't have a course catalog from your specific read degree program that shows you a description of each class, I just took a screenshot, I looked up each specific class, screenshotted every single class that I did, put it into a uh, Illustrator file, and then saved it as a PDF and sent it. Make sure that you do that so you don't have any hiccups with your application. Alrighty, so the next section that I wanna to talk to you about for your application is your recommendation letter. I can't stress to you guys enough how important a strong recommendation letter is to your overall application. Um, it's the first time where the professors and the people who are looking at your application will have a third party or a third perspective on who you are as a person and as a designer. This is why it's so important when you're choosing your recommender, your recommend, yes, your recommender, the person who writes your recommendation letter, that it's someone that you have a relationship with. You don't want it to be someone where you didn't have a strong relationship with them. Like for example, a professor where you barely went to their class and they don't know who you are, or I don't know, someone who only interacted with you once before. Because if you do something like that, you're running the risk of them not responding to you. And number two, or which could even be worse, is getting a very generic, basic recommendation letter. One of the things that I can't stress even more is make sure you reach out to at least two people if for writing your recommendation letter because people will drop the ball. People will forget that you sent an email to them. People won't respond. People will say they'll do something for you and they won't do it. So just as like a little help, make sure you reach out to at least more than just one person just in case, or at least have one backup of someone that you can go to if the first person doesn't respond to you. Very important that you give the person who's writing the recommendation letter enough time to write it. Okay, so here's another tip. Make sure that you send a full list of your accomplishments and the things that are important to you that you want inside the letter. Because the person who's writing the letter is not gonna know the specifics of what you're thinking in your mind that you would like in a recommendation letter. So make sure you just type a little email. As soon as they confirm that they want to uh, write a recommendation letter for you, go ahead and send them what you would like into the recommendation letter so that they can have those specific keywords and those specific things that are gonna help your application. I was extremely lucky to have a 
person who not only was my professor at one point, but also was my boss at another point. So she was able to see both dynamics of me as a student and also as an employee. And I worked, for, worked with her for a little while, so she was able to see all the different projects that I was working on myself. And at the time I was working for the School of Art, and so she was able to see the different projects that I was doing for the department. Very, very grateful for the person who wrote it. And if you're watching this, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now I'm gonna go through my personal uh, letter of recommendation that I used to submit with my application for the Polytechnico. Now, if you want to view the whole entire letter, because I'm not going to go through everything word by word, please follow me on Instagram. Please follow me because positive energy for your application. Follow me on Instagram and then DM me if you want to see this letter and I'll send it to you. Okay. So first things first, make sure that the person, the letter of recommendation has some type of official letterhead or some type of official component. It just makes it look more crisp and clean. Now, if it's a person that's like a, um, uh, someone who's not a professor or doesn't have like a specific letterhead, that's fine. But I think it overall just makes it look a little bit more official when you have that official letterhead at the top. Now in this, I had told my recommendation person that I was applying for the, uh, the master's program in product design. So I sent her exactly the degree program that I was applying for so that it could be reiterated inside the essay itself. She also stated our relationship. Uh, she, known, she has known me as a student, a leader, and an employee of the School of Art for two and a half years. So that's important to establish the narrative of your relationship because the person who's reading it wants to know what's the connection between you two. Like why why would this person have any, any ability to talk on your behalf? So I think that we had a, con a very short conversation about originally it was written as his skills are very refined for an artist as young as he is. Now, the reason why we had a conversation about this is because I was applying for a design program. And I already had some design experience as well. And yes, I do consider myself as an artist, but it's important for me to, it was important for me to show the people reading my recommendation letter that I was, I had both components. I had the freedom of being an artist, but also the functionality of being a designer. So I'd asked her if she could put that I was also a designer as well. So now it reads, his skills are very refined for an artist and designer as young as he is. So just to put that little, little thing on the top, just to make it a little bit more um, wrapped up into it. She makes really good statements in this as well. His research methods, organization and compiling information, and his ability to effectively communicate and present his ideas was at a level that would be impressive for a graduate student. And he was only in his third year of undergraduate studies. So basically she's doing a really good job setting me up to uh, present myself as someone who is able to handle this, uh, the rigor of the course at the Polytechnico. I really, really enjoyed how she ended my recommendation letter with saying, he's always happy to find the time and the space to share thoughts and ideas. He's continually finding ways to work with fellow artists. He respects and providing open doors for any opportunities that arise. He is not a selfish artist or friend. Please review his application with strong consideration. I give him my highest recommendation without reserv reservation. If you have further inquiries, please feel free to contact me at her information. So the reason why I like the way that she ended it is because she she believed in me. And I think that I'm really lucky to have someone to write something like that for me just in general, but she believed in me and that's important to get across to the people reading your application. If you take yourself out of the equation and you were to imagine yourself as this is someone you don't know, when you're reading your recommendation letter, you should be wanting to have this person on your team. You want to feel like the person who wrote this and in the position that they are, because they're saying this about this person, this is someone that you're gonna want on your team. This is gonna be someone you want on the university. This is someone that if we have them in the university, it's gonna help us as a university. Alrighty guys, thank you guys for hanging in there. I know I've been saying a lot of information, but 
I hope I'm kind of constructing a little general overview of how to just set yourself up for success with your application. Now, the next section of this uh, video will be about your letter of motivation, which is, I think it was kind of fun because it's kind of like your first time where you're able to express yourself directly to the professors and the people who are looking at your application. So you get to say all the different things that you want to say about who you are as a person, a designer. This is a great time to explain uh, what you can bring to the university and also things that you're expecting from the university. All these different things can be expressed in this letter of motivation. Um, again, if you want to read the essay in its entirety, because I will not be reading the full essay right now, I recommend just going to my Instagram and shooting me a DM and I will send you a PDF version so you can read it and kind of use it as an outline for your own essay when you decide to apply for the Polytechnico. Okay, so I'm first going to start with the structure of my essay. And then after I will discuss the different tips or things that I think are really imperative that you should have inside your essay that will really make it, really make it uh, stand out. Okay, so when you're first starting your letter, structure wise, go ahead and put the address of the school in the upper left hand corner. Um, I, now that I'm looking at this, I would switch something actually. I would do the date, the Italian way, or I guess other than the United States way. Start with the day, then the month, then the year. That way it reads more <laughs> European, more rest of the world. You want to make sure that your essay looks as clean and as, um, within context as possible when writing your letter. So make sure the date is not how I have it, but I didn't know at the time. Here's a tip, use it. Add the day first, the month, then the year, so it looks smooth. Address your essay as Dear Polytechnical de Milano Committee, because you don't know who specifically you're speaking with, because you are because you are essentially sending your application to a committee of people to review all of the different information within your application. Okay, starting with the structure of my essay. So um, basically follows the basic structure of any normal body paragraph essay thing. So you should have an introduction, uh, you should have a body paragraph or body paragraphs and a conclusion. You try to aim for just one page. Now for me personally, I kind of spilt over into the very top of two pages, but I would highly recommend that most letter of motivations are gonna be one page. And if you think about it, if they have to read a whole bunch of other, other people's um, applications and other people's letters, shorter is better in the sense, short and concise is the best. Now, some tips. The first three sentences that you're writing in your essay should be honestly the best sentences that you have in your whole entire essay. It is imp it's imperative that you're able to capture people's attention with the first couple of sentences that you have inside your essay. Because if you bore them from the beginning, they're gonna be bored reading your essay and may not even read it. Just so in your introduction, you should have uh, introduce who you are, you should say what you're applying for, and you should give a little background on where you're from or what your undergrad degree was, just so you can create an idea for them. Dear Polytechnico di Milano Committee, my name is Zachary Stell Edwards, and I'm writing to express my enthusiastic interest in applying for the Lorea Magistrale in Integrated Product Design. I was born and raised in Mesa, Arizona, USA, which is right next to the Superstition Mountain Range. This region is hot year round and the temperature can get up to 43 to 49 degrees Celsius. From growing up in the desert, I have seen the potential for renewable energy integration, but more importantly, the global necessity for environmental adaptability. Even though Arizona is the sunniest state in the United States, fossil based power grid monopolies have created penalizations towards solar energy. This makes it this makes it difficult for many to make the transition to solar because of the large fees charged for not being connected to the power grid. 
As a designer, this has inspired me to create products that not only are accessible to the masses, but also empower individuals to capture and use their own energy. Now, when the professors are reading, they're going to be like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's, tell me more. Why, why is it so hot? Why is it all these different things? This is what you're trying to do. You're trying to, I don't want to say tease someone, but what would be something that you could say that may, would make someone feel like, oh, I need to keep reading more. So basically in it as well, in the first introduction, I basically explain where I'm from, um, which there leads into some of the work that is interesting to me. Because I'm from Arizona, I've had an interest in alternative energy because I've been living in a place where we had year-round sun and how that has influenced my design, my products, my art, and those different aspects, all from my environment. So I created this kind of like a, kind of like a, um, a scale. I introduce who I am. Mm, they get an idea who I am. I introduce where I'm from. Okay, so they kind of have a depiction of where I'm from. And then I give them an interesting fact. So now they have this idea, oh, it's really hot in Arizona. Okay. And then I connect it how that has inspired my design work and how that has influenced me as a person. Next is my body paragraphs. In my body paragraphs, the body paragraphs are going to be where you can do some more explaining. I like to think of it as like your explanation. In these paragraphs, you should be explaining either your portfolio. This is what I did. I explained some of the things that I had in my portfolio. I also explained in my body paragraph how I didn't graduate with a design undergraduate, but an art undergraduate. And I use that space to explain how art has influenced me as a designer because I was able to develop my drawing skills and also be able to interact with different materials. You can explain about different things that interest you, different things that are, um, intriguing to you, your aesthetic, you should use the space to explain what you have in your portfolio. So I described um, how I was able to create my parts for my portfolio. I explain um, just, just very, very quickly and very brief the overall aspect of what I was trying to accomplish with my portfolio. I also put in there what my dream was. Um, a lot of people, I feel like, when we're writing their letter of motivations, we'll talk about how much they uh, want to go to the school and doing at the school, but they don't talk about what they want to accomplish after. How will the school help you accomplish your goals? How will the Polytechnical be able to bring your career to the next level? How will the Polytechnical di Milano be able to uh, support you in your goals? Another thing that people miss in the body paragraph is they forget to explain what can they bring to the university. It's normally about what the university can do for them. Oh, it's going to help me do this, it's gonna help me do that, all these different things. How will you help the university? What perspective are you bringing that's gonna allow the university to expand and you know be proud to call you a Polytechnical graduate? And then, and finally, your conclusion. I am a firm believer that to be the best, you must train under the best. Hence, my willingness to move nearly 8,600 kilometers from home. I want to be a part of evolving technologies that are pushing the boundaries of what people believe is possible. I hope to be considered for placement in this program, and I desire to be a valuable addition to the Polytechnical di Milano. Concise, concise. We're not telling a whole story. You don't got to tell about your grandma doing this one thing. You don't got to tell about, make it concise, explain who you are. That's basically the gist of the essay. Just some random bonus things that you can do for your essay. I printed my document out and I signed it so they could see like a handwritten signature. I just think that it's really cool and just Okay, not really cool, but adds, adds an extra sense of personalization to it that shows that you took the time to add your signature in there. This doesn't apply to the rest of the world, but mainly just the United States. If you are putting any specific measurements inside your essay, just use the metric system or use um, Celsius. 
for example, when I was explaining that where I'm from is 43 to 49 degrees Celsius, that is what they're used to reading. That's what they understand as, you know, normal weather. Normal weather basically everywhere besides the United States. Or how I said 8,600 kilometers versus how many miles. Because you need to make it as easy as possible for people to read and not be confused when they're reading your essay. This is mainly for people from the United States. Just make sure you just convert it. It just is gonna be easier for people to understand what you're trying to relate to. Is Make sure that you give yourself enough time that you can have other people read it. You should have your friends read your essay and give you their opinions. You should have your grandma and grandpa read your essay. You should have a professor read your essay because you need to do multiple revisions. You're not gonna be able to get this done in just one late night session typing. That's possible, but are you gonna fully express yourself on who you are in a one page uh, in a one page format in an, in an all nighter? Uh, maybe, maybe not. First things first, just write down all the things that come into your mind. It doesn't have to be grammatically correct. It doesn't have to be perfect English. It doesn't have to be necessarily even making sense. Just how do you feel? Write all that stuff down, okay? Next step, start writing full sentences. Create and connect those sentences together. Take time to really, really get in there and make sure that you add every single thing that you want to say that expresses who you are as a person and what you want the Polytechnical di Milano Committee to know about you. After, after you have written some sentences, take a break. You have to take a break so your brain, you should take a break. After you finish writing that stuff, you should take a break because your brain is gonna be so used to reading your essay, you're gonna either miss things that you missed before because you're so uh, ingrained in reading it a certain way that your brain's just gonna skip over it, or you may be feeling different another day and you want to express yourself in another point of view or add something else in there. So you gotta give yourself time to be able to express fully who, what you wanna say. I would even give yourself, I would plan for about a month. It took me about a month to write this, even though it's very short and very concise, because I had a bunch of things I wanted to say, but I really had to redact a bunch of things because some of the things were not important. You know, kind of long of a video, but not that long of a video. I feel like I was very concise and I wasn't going too crazy, but um, I would, I just want to offer you some encouragement if you are nervous for applying for the school. Um, when I was applying for the Polytechnico, I didn't think I was gonna get in. I didn't think that my portfolio was good enough. I didn't think that I had the technical skill to be able to get in. And all these all these doubts and everything were running through my mind. But to offer you some encouragement, I say just apply. You never know if you'll get in or not if you don't apply. And you may end up surprising yourself like I surprised myself. I didn't think that I had the ability to even do it. And I was able to accomplish this during COVID, during when my whole entire home university shut down, when I was moving to a different state, all these things were happening to me at the same time. So be, to be able to get into the school was a big accomplishment for me. And please DM me on Instagram, DM me on TikTok, and just let me know some of the questions that you have. I always like helping people. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the studio and I'll see you in Milano soon.